I'm Coley Kohler with On Native Ground, and I'm with Brooke Sweeney. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and your what tribe you're from? I'm a member of the Blackfeet tribe. I'm also a Salish descendant. I grew up in Montana. I went to high school off the reservation, but I lived on the Flathead Reservation as a child. I went to undergrad at Stanford University where I studied psychology and wrote an honors thesis on the media effects on health beliefs in American Indians. And then for a few years, I thought, you know, I should do something practical. And I worked um, in a nonprofit called the Indian Law Resource Center because I was thinking about being a lawyer and then the creative bug just you know had always been there and I applied to New York University's film program and I was very fortunate to get in and from there I've been making several short films and this is the culmination of my work at NYU. Can you tell us a little bit about OK Breathe Orally? Sure, so OK Breathe Orally is a short film that um, is going to be part of a larger feature length project that we're planning. Um, It's a story of a young woman who was adopted away from her community and her uh, longing to um, kind of reconnect with her roots kind of through a roundabout way of really wanting to have a baby. (laughs) Can you tell us a little bit about the character Orally? Sure, Orally is um, Oh man, she is, she's kind of shy in some ways and she's kind of taken a back seat in um, her relationship with her boyfriend and um, has kind of in, in some ways like hasn't really, you know, wanted to take the next step but now she really wants to ha- start having children and that's really kind of driven like most of what she goes through in this story but um, she, you know, she's like a young working professional she works in a in an office to you know assist a real estate agent and that's kind of her life you know she's kind of working to help support her her boyfriend who's an, a musician so yeah that's her character <laughs> so you said you graduated from Stanford with psychology and then you decided to go into film so what made you decide to go from that well, um, I was in like community theater stuff when I was, uh, you know, really young, and um, I've always been, you know, interested in the performing arts and um, kind of from theater. You know, I developed an interest in film. I mean, I've been watching films and been inspired by films and always writing um, since I was little, and uh, so I just it just kind of like naturally progressed to going to New York University. Um, I did take a few classes when I was an undergraduate in film and, um, you know, they didn't have a film major at the time when I was at Stanford, so I decided to do something else. But um, I also was involved with um, the Ram's Head Theatrical Society, which did like this kind of sketch comedy show when I was going to school there so you know I wrote for that I acted in that and you know it was really fun so I just kind of wanted to keep doing it because it's what I really love to do. In your film Indigenoid <laughs> you you um, you explored the place of native identity and can you talk a little bit about that? Well the Indigenoid was kind of it was like a project where um, I wanted to see you know how many how many native iconography or imagery was in our everyday life and to see you know how like that would affect like somebody you know who's to kind of started to notice all of those things and like you know would they be upset would they be happy would they be you know like just just explore that idea so the indigenoid came through you know wondering what you know what kind of path emotionally a character would take after seeing you know so many things like Jeep Grand Cherokee and all that sort of stuff. (laughs) And can you tell us a little bit about how you you grew up on the reservation but you went to school outside of it? Uh, It it was kind of when we moved off the reservation it was kind of weird you know because we had left you know my community my family my grandfather took care of me when I was a child and then it was all of a sudden we were in this in comparison a very big city of 35,000 people and it just felt you know kind of strange and for a while I had to kind of find you know you know what community I felt more comfortable with and that's kind of when I found theater so yeah. Can you give any advice to Native youth who want to tell their stories through film? 
Uh, okay, so, um, hey guys, if you want to make films, go for it. I mean, all of your points of view are valid. Whatever story you want to tell is valid. It doesn't matter if it's traditional or not traditional. You know, everything that's coming from you as a native youth is native. So go out and do it. And now we're here with Laura Ortman. So can you tell us your role in this film, OK Breathe Orally? I'm the music composer. What themes did you have to work with for this film? Uh, Brooke, you know, it was a constant collaboration with Brooke. Always just kind of be in touch, like, where she wanted music and what we were going for. So you would just start out with rough recordings and, like, you know, she would be like, we need something a little more energetic or, you know, there was like a subway section, so we need something that kind of makes it sound like a, a train. Or we had like the disappearing hands section, so you wanted to kind of vibe like an in and out. So you, you try so many different ways of, of doing it. I tried different instruments, and she'd be like, yay, nay, faster, slower, you know, louder, softer, you know, no, yes. <laughs> so in the end, we finally came up with um, the finished music, and then we hit the recording studio for a nice professional recording, and, um, and then her sound designer mixed it all in so it works works together with you know all the other sounds in the film so when did you start your music career uh i started playing violin uh however old you are in third grade but that um my uh two grandmas were um music teachers and violinists so it was always there uh, but i was um just started you know it's playing in you know, school orchestras and had a great violin teacher who always inspired me. So that's, I think he was probably the source of keeping it going along with my family. So. And what tribe are you from? I'm White Mountain Apache um, out in Arizona. But, um, I was adopted, so I grew up outside of St. Louis in Alton, Illinois, and then studied art at the University of Kansas and then moved to New York in 97. And then a month before 9-11, I, I met my Apache family, reconnected, so full circle. <laughs> <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about your band? I play in a, um, different groups often. Um, I have a solo project, it's called the Dust Dive Flash. It's my one man band. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just my live shows maybe have a backing track, play violin, or play guitar and sing, or anything, play keyboards and do samples. Um, and then I play with a, a bunch of great Brooklyn, New York musicians. There's like harp and drums and electronics. And um, and then I put together a all native orchestra called the Coast Orchestra. So we just kind of bounce all over the map and then, you know, just collaborate with other musicians that that come through and have at it. <laughs> what what instruments do you play? I play a uh, violin, uh, the Apache violin, uh, the electric guitar, uh, piano. I play the megaphone, <laughs> um, pedal steel guitar, uh, musical saw, and some keyboards and electronics and samplers. <laughs> What advice do you have for youth who want to become involved in music? I guess try your hardest to find a really great teacher. I learned violin super traditionally, classically, and then bounced around with, with music and started you know, playing with dancers and doing film and art and stuff. So it was kind of came easy to keep it going because it wasn't just about you. It was about playing with other people. So. Um, I guess that keeps the ball rolling as far as, you know, keeping music like in your heart and trying to keep playing it and always keep it super creative and heartfelt. So, Thank you for being on Native Ground. And now I'm with Kendra Milnichuk. <laughs> so can you tell us your role in this film? Sure. So um, I played the role of Orly in the film OK Breathe Orly. <laughs> Was it difficult to prepare for this role? It wasn't very difficult to prepare for the role. When, when I got the script from Brooke, I was kind of shocked because it was about a woman in her early 30s wanting to have a child and who had been adopted. 
um, out of the tribe, and I am a woman in my early 30s <laughs> who uh, wants to have a child and has been adopted out of <laughs> my community. So uh, it was actually, it was, it was very close, very, very close to home, um, which I suppose had its own work involved with not getting, you know, confused about making it my story, but, but really allowing it to be uh, what, what Orly was going through. But it, but it definitely was not difficult to, to connect to at all. <laughs> Do you feel that your character has a message that the youth can relate to and learn from? Oh gosh, I really hope so. Um, I, I, I feel like, like the, the character, I mean, Orly was going through what I think a lot of, uh, a lot of young, young people go through probably a lot of people much much younger than than she actually is in that there's a lot of searching you know about who you are and and what it is that you want to do with your life and um and she has um i guess what i would say a dogged determination <laughs> to to get what she wants and and i think that's that's a really important message for for just about anybody she's you know she really was lost and and um, spent a lot of time trying to find some answers and figure out who she is and I think that's something that pretty much all of us have done at some point or another yeah so you know I guess the message the message would be to keep keep seeking keep keep you know listening deep inside and figuring out what it is that makes your light shine a little brighter I think that's what she was doing <laughs> So why do you think Orly had the need to try to have a child? Have a child? Um, I, you know, I think a lot of what, what she was going through in, in her searching for who she is was about her own cultural identity because um, it's, it's a really strange thing, you know, being, being adopted, you, you grow up and you don't know, um, you, know, you don't see your blood in anyone else, you know, and you don't, and you don't see um, necessarily f um, familiarity and, you know, you don't recognize the faces of the people who are in your family and so at, at some point I think a lot of a lot of kids who've been adopted find um, that to be mm, maybe not lacking but a curiosity and I think for orally it, it it manifested itself in a real lack and and so she wanted very badly to know where she came from and and maybe that was too scary for her so instead she was looking at where or, or you know bringing someone else into the world and providing that um, opportunity for them to know where they came from um, so and and possibly in, through that an opportunity to connect to her own heritage <laughs> I have always enjoyed being other people <laughs> it's um it's a really great chance to, to sort of you know take whatever whatever's going on in your own life and kind of like check it out the door and get to take on someone else's world someone else's problems for a few minutes or um you know excitements writing was something that wasn't really uh didn't come easily but talking comes very easily so <laughs> acting was logical and um i've yeah i've been acting my whole life i i um, went to school in montana and um, studied at the University of Montana, I studied some acting, and uh, spent a few years in Los Angeles uh, doing mostly theater, so I decided to move to New York. And since I got to New York, I've done mostly film. So it's kind of, uh, you know, it, the work finds you and you say yes. <laughs> One of the great things about being here at Sundance with this, with this film was that I finally, you know, had an opportunity to to really do the thing that I love to do. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Kendra Milnichak. I play Orly in the film OK Breathe Orly here at Sundance, and I'm on Native Ground. Hi, I'm Laura Ortman, and I'm on Native Ground. My name is Brooke Sweeney. I'm the director of OK Breathe Orly at the Sundance Film Festival, and here I am with On Native Ground.